Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy JRock447 back at it again with another NBA 2K14 video. And as you can see, I'm trying to switch up our rotations because Metal World Peace, you know, everybody's unhappy in this game. And I think that's a. I don't know if it's a glitch or 2K just doesn't know how people actually feel. But everybody in this game feels like they should be a starter when in reality, they shouldn't. And. I have a 12-man rotation, like, honestly, I could go without Royce White, but Royce White can actually knock down a jump shot opposed to Metal World Peace, so that's why I use him. But anyway, we're going into this game against the Spurs, and, you know, Jay-Z, the rule is back, and I can, I, I'm going to talk about live and this game in particular for Next Gen, because Next Gen, I want to get, I was going to get Assassin's Creed. But I'm not going to get Assassin's Creed. I think I'm going to go with Watch Dogs. And then I might get Madden. And then. Then I will either choose between 2K or Live. Now Live. I had high hopes for them. I had. I really did have high hopes. And you know it's something different. But as I saw that new screenshot with LeBron for the next gen. I just couldn't believe it. It looks Real, it looks so. It looks like LeBron James. It looks like LeBron James. Like honestly, it's the realest thing I ever saw. So people say this game is life like. Just wait until the new 2K. So you know it's up in the air and Javale McGee's already dunking in the game. But yeah, tell me what you're gonna get. Are you gonna get live? Are you gonna get 2K? Maybe I might get both. Like if live has a price drop, I might as well get that because you know. I like the competition. The competition is a good thing for the sports community because, you know, sports community and gaming is not that big. I mean, Call of Duty is bigger, so is Minecraft. But, you know, sports community, we're making that up and coming, standing, you know, trying to make our make a name for ourselves in the Mon Shopper knocks down that jump shot. And also, hopefully the Knicks will have a nice lineup coming up into the next season. And the reason why I didn't post a video yesterday was because... I had this thing called Newsday, and what it basically is is a marching band festival. It's where some bands come and they march on this field. It okay, it's very hard to explain. Like, like you know how marching band do, does the ha halftime shows. Basically, you have to make it like a halftime show under ten minutes and perform it. And we did that at Hofstra at their stadium. And yeah, it was pretty good. Like when I first stepped on the field, I was kind of nervous. Trying, I was trying not to be nervous, but I was kind of nervous because it was my first time doing it this year. And honestly, I got cotton mouth. Like I never got cotton mouth in my life. And playing an instrument, getting cotton mouth is a no-no. And I got cotton mouth. Oh my god, it was, it was crazy. So yeah, I did get nervous, but I did do good. I mean, one part. We never went out too far for this formation, but we did that one time, and I was like, what the heck, why are we going out so far? But yeah, anyway, Prigioni, he knocks down both free throws at the line, and you see J.R. Smith. And J.R. Smith's shot is really inconsistent in this game. Well, that's realistic, so I'm not even going to grife over that. But yeah, the three-point is not as proficient as it used to be. Like, everybody used to be able to knock down a three. No problem. Like, Melo makes more threes than J.R. Smith, and Melo doesn't have the three-point thing on his, you know, player thing. But he knocks down more threes, which makes zero sense at all. But anyway, we have Metal World Peace with the ball. I try to find minutes for him, but he's really a defensive player. So we got to use him in there for defense. Who knows, maybe we might trade him. Even though I wanted to keep him on this team, but we got to do the best to win a championship. Anyway, the quarter ends and the score is 23-10 in favor of the New York Knicks and J.R. Smith. Not having the greatest game so far, but hopefully he can capitalize. And who was that coming to the room? That was Corey Maggette, and I think he was blocked. Anyway, he throws a Hail Mary pass, and he gives it right to Amari Stoudemire. Was that Amari? Nope, that was actually J.R. Smith who made a layup. But yeah, Amari Stoudemire is doing well this season. I kind of, I really like what I see out of him. And ever since I put him in the starting lineup, we've been doing really good. So, yeah. Anyway, that was Pablo Prigioni knocking down the three. And this is Carmelo taking it strong to the hoop, but he misses. But he is going to the line. And I could have did this video earlier, but I, I was so tired because I was at the court for like three to four hours. So, yeah, I was mad tired when I came home. But, yeah. 
Anyway, Carmelo knocks down the first one, then he knocks, he does not knock down the second one. And who's your favorite team coming into the NBA season? I want to know that. Who's your favorite team? Who you rocking with? Are you in a fantasy league? Yes or no? Just tell me because I want to I wanna know what you guys are up to. And Amar Stoudemire, he has that sure shot from mid-range. And that's what I like about Amar Stoudemire. Like, he has a lot of things. He can shoot the ball, but the Knicks got to use him where they can use him. I mean, especially with Carmelo. People need to get on the perimeter because that's Carmelo's lane. And then when Carmelo shoots, then somebody could go grab the rebound. Now, the reason why I got JaVale McGee is... Tyson Chandler has a timetable. JaVale McGee doesn't. JaVale McGee has room to grow. Uh, Tyson Chandler doesn't. And that's a goaltending call. What was you doing? Anyway, Andrea Bargani is going to the line. And we might trade Andrea Bargani in the offseason. I don't know. He's a nice big man coming off the bench. So I really like him coming off the bench. I was thinking about getting Lamar Odom. And up, oh, he's going to the line again. I was, yeah, I was thinking about getting Lamar Odom. But then again, I would have to find minutes for him. So, yeah, that's another hard thing. Like, Royce White, he doesn't care. He could sit on the bench. He would, he really wouldn't care. All right? I, I just had Royce White just in case any of my small forwards got injured. I got somebody to come off the bench and play for some minutes. And that's why I had him in the first place. So, next year's draft, hopefully I can get somebody good. I can trade Royce White for a draft pick. So, that might be a good trade. Tell me in the comments. Uh, somebody told me to trade Amari Stoudemire. I was like, nah. Somebody said to get Steve Novak, but I like having size. I couldn't get Steve Novak because Steve Novak is a small forward. He, Even though he's 6'9", he cannot play defense. But anyway, we go into halftime. Tim Duncan is pretty mad because the score is 34-43 in favor of your New York Knicks. And Tony Parker was trying to do some outrageous stuff, but he did not get it. Anyway, Carmelo's taking it to the hoop, and he does get the lucky bounce on that play. So, we're up in this game still. We have not trailed in this game. And, yeah, I really like that. I mean, this is like the defending Western Conference champs. And we're taking them to the house. And another thing I don't like about the game, they don't have realistic minutes set up. Like, all the starters are going to get 35 minutes plus for no reason. And yet, everybody on the bench isn't really going to get anything. And I hate that because Iman Shumper doesn't get all that much time. J.R. Smith, he gets about the same as him as Iman Shumper. They share their minutes. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Amar Stoudemire is not getting about. Amar Stoudemire shouldn't even play in 30 minutes a game, but I put him at that. I put him at 30. I should put him at 30 minutes a game so I can get Andre Bargani some minutes. But, yeah, they share minutes. They don't have 35 minutes a game, and they do that for every team in this game, which is stupid. Amari Stoudemire misses the first time, but he does get the and one. And Corey Maggetti, I don't know why they're playing him so damn much because he is garbage. He's just a big body. He's just one of those muscular small forwards, just like Royce White and just like Metal World Peace. But, hey, he can play D, and he can dunk the hell of the ball. But, yeah, basketball-wise for me, I am going to start trying to get my hops up because it is a kid. He's like one inch taller than me. But damn, he can grab the rim. I'm like, holy smokes, dude. Like, good God. Uh, the highest jump I ever did, I think I was about four, maybe five inches off off the rim. So, I mean, I guess I can say my hops are pretty good. I'm only five, six. But yeah, like, I'm trying to get my hops up. Um, I am overweight. Like, I'm 160. But. You know, I lost a tremendous amount of weight from last year. I used to be 180, and I was like a half inch shorter or an inch shorter. So, yeah, I'm doing good things for myself, and I'm trying to do this YouTube thing for myself also. So, hopefully, you guys will like this. And, yeah, also check out jrob 98 tv I post some really funny videos on that channel. And I'm trying to get it out there because I want that to be the main channel. Because, you know, I started making comedy videos. Okay, so the gaming thing, I don't want to, like, dismiss it, but... You know, that's what started me off, the comedy videos, and I want to relive that. So, on jrom 98 tv you can relive it with me. And, yeah, Pablo Prigioni off the inbound makes it three. He makes more threes consistently than J.R. Smith. I don't understand it because Pablo Prigioni, whenever he gets in a game, he does not like to shoot. I mean, this dude, look at J.R. Smith. Okay, J.R. Smith made that one, so let me stop talking because J.R. Smith, he's trying to prove something. He wants to get that starting spot. I, was gonna, I put J.R. Smith in. For a starting role for one game, and he didn't do so well, honestly. Because, you know, J.R. Smith is good coming off the bench. Like, the lineup was Raymond Felton, J.R. Smith, Iman Shumpert, Carmelo, and then JaVale McGee. 
And it was all right. And I think that was Pablo Prigioni making that nice buzzer beater. It was all right, but it wasn't the best. But hey, you know, you got to get it where you can get it. And the, we're leading 70 to 54. We're blowing them out of the water right now. But yeah, that lineup was very small. So, you know, it didn't really work. I really wanted to try to put Iman Shumper and J.R. Smith in the same lineup, but that would make us four, that that make us so undersized. It's unbelievable. I mean, J.R. Smith is 6'6", six, six, but he doesn't play defense. Iman Shumper does play defense, so yeah, Carmelo, he's exceptional at defense. Like, he's getting better every year, every year. And JaVale McGee, he could block his shot every day, but he does not, JaVale McGee doesn't have any stamina. Like, that's the only thing I don't like about it. So, I could give JaVale McGee about 28 minutes and, you know, be good. Because, you know, Amari Stoudemire, he puts in work. He can knock down that J all day. But JaVale McGee, you know, I would not be mad giving him less minutes. Because, you know, JaVale McGee needs to learn how to work more. But anyway, the game's coming down. And we're leading. And Carmelo's dunking on people like Carmelo. Have some respect. But anyway, we win the game 82 to 96. Tim Dunk is like, man. Y'all, we don't need you guys. I'm not winning the championship. I'm retiring. I got my divorce papers and everything. But anyway, I'm looking for a trade for Metal World Peace. I was just just looking for fun. And then, get, look who I find. Quincy Pondexter. Anyway, it's been another J-Rob 447 video. I'll elaborate later. Peace.